Alright, boys. You are a fool and a nuisance, brother. Helen, is this creepy little toad bothering you again? Shall I throw him off? This is getting quite out of hand. Hands? Oh, he doesn't have hands. He's a troll. And that's why we found him here. He escaped from his... Would you tell your talking mo... Oh! Arthur! How are you? Never better. Let's see, you two haven't changed much? No. <laughs> He's still a lizard. Coward. Gerbil. Mommy's boy. Vanity. Effluent. Discharge. Milk sap. You already said that. Uh, I did not. <laughs> You're a milk sap. Well, you are all chatter and no testes, dear brother. Helen, I will make you love me if it is the last thing I do. And Sam. And prove how suitable I am to make a happy and stable life with. I shall throw myself over the waterfall in just a barrel. And so shall I, just to demonstrate how little your feeble gestures mean, you homunculus. Arthur, please come do the honors and make sure we, um... Oh, you silly little tapeworm of a man. Follow me! Follow you? I was born first. Helen, I love you. And brother, you're a living proof of God's remarkable sense of humor! <laughs> All right, well, here we go. Good luck, crazy bastard. Oh, shit. Oh, my lord. Oh, the fools. The silly fools. I cannot believe they did this. Come on. Let's go try and find them. Sounds like Ariana Grande. It might be easier for you if huh. only one of them was... Guess my main and... <laughs> that is a terrible thing to say. You got a favorite? Here you we are. We must find them. Acrisius, what have you done? <laughs> Brother, are you there? Acri, <gasps> is that you? <gasps> I've had the wind knocked out of me. <laughs> I thought you were a goner. <laughs> It's a miracle we're alive! <laughs> silly, silly voice! You nearly died! For me! <laughs> She's right. Oh, dear brother, what fools we've been! You're the fool! But a brave one. You might be dense, but <laughs> you are the noblest man I know! You're <laughs> a lion! Giant! You're an earth shaker! World! Conqueror! Let's Ow. not let anything come between us again. Never. Boys? I, I, Good I, lady, adieu. Bewitch, some other milk sops. We will have none of it. But I, I thought let, that... Before this siren calls us to the rocks again, let us away from here. You lead the way, brother. The West awaits. Boys? Boys? <laughs> Well, quite some suitors you picked there. I was trying to stop them from killing themselves. They won't last a week without no, me. Probably not. But you'll have an easier time. I guess I will. So long. She quite enjoyed that. Oh, I wasn't trying to lead them on, you yeah. know. It was just uh -huh. exciting. The smartest men I knew. With positively the least sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's usually the way it works. Good luck. Wonder what he was referring to there. But uh nonetheless hey, we got just a few more things on the roster. This is it. 
You okay? Peachy. You sure? No, I ain't sure. You still working? Is anybody still working? The whole goddamn place full of people bickering, fighting, and lying. It makes me real sad. I know. I need someone to ride with me. Do what? Finish off them of Driscoll's. I hear the last of them is holed up at Hanging Dog Ranch. I don't have it in me no more. I saw a calm swing. I, I just don't care. I was a married woman. You know what they did to me and to my husband. Like you're the only one of these fools that I trust. I've got to do this. Of course, we're gonna help Sadie. She's got that wagon. I'll, tell you what, I'll do it. But there's something you can help me with. Abigail, Jack, John, make sure they make it. I mean, this whole thing is pretty much done. But when the time comes. Or how do you mean? When the time comes, you help them. What do you mean? I mean, help them escape when I. You know, you and me, we're more ghosts than people. But them, they, they could... I know. Of course I will. Thank you, Arthur. You want to ride with me now, or meet me up at Hanging Dog Ranch when you can? I'll go with you. Thanks, Arthur. Okay. Come on. <clears throat> Find more if we're killing. <laughs> hey. You seen anything down there? Yeah, I think there's a bunch of them down there. I'm mostly drunk. But one of them is a fat fellow with a beard. Him? He's mine. Okay. Sure thing. It's a big ranch. Run down. Lots of folk there. What is this? Spread pretty thin. I'll set it off and then we'll Hey, it's the Lickfield. We'll take it from there. Take it from there. Okay. So no real plan then. Oh, I got a plan. Now come on. Is that a woman? Jesus. Who the hell is that lady? Hey, that's the lady from the hanging. Come on. Yeah, so shoot me instead. Ah, come on. No, we don't. Alright, you take the left side, I'll take the right. Oh, come on. Alright. Still gaining familiarity with this gun. That's not explosive. Outside, don't want. 
Ah, shit. Okay. We're not in there yet? He was a good man, my Jakey. We was always sweet on one another. I'm sure. Yeah. I miss him every day, every moment. Oh, they turned me into a monster, Arthur. But my memories of him, they still pure. Mm. I ain't even got that. <sighs> Aside from my Jake, you're the best man I've known. <laughs> I know the company you keep. The competition ain't too fierce. <laughs> we, uh... We should get away from her. Yeah. I think I need to be alone for a bit. I understand. You, uh, might want to get yourself cleaned up. Thank you, Arthur. Sadie Adler, I hope you find peace. Okay. So. Uh, if you'd like, you can click away from the video now. I, I'm just going to... I'm going to be reading some journal entries from Arthur. I, I'm sure as you know by now, it, it helps with the whole watch time. If you do stick around and you want to listen to these stories, but I understand it's going to be a lot of... Well, essentially a whole lot of nothing other than reflecting. This... This is the last episode before we start aiming towards the end of the chapter. So, these journal entries are going to have us reflect on the rest of the main story of what what we did during this 100% um, completion run. And, uh, yeah, then it's going to end. So, I'm going to pull out the journal now. Okay, <clears throat> so the last page had us talk about uh, the um the the this was right around when we were still talking to the mayor. Guess Billy Midnight never escaped his past. Guy was deranged about shooting some fella in the back or in their sleep or something else. Very sensible in my opinion. Anyway, Gilded consumed him, so like a real proper gentleman, he tried to kill me. Black Belle, what a woman. She was younger, and I was in the market for a woman to go killing with. What a pair we could have made. She told me old Cowboy Calloway was a poser and a liar. Big surprise. Found the murderer, a man named Edmund Lowry. Took him in to the sheriff and Valentine after he nearly killed me. He jumped the sheriff, and I killed him. Nasty bastard he was. Met a real pair of... well, I don't know quite what they were. 
Names were so ridiculous, I won't even begin to try to remember them. But they were Greek, or Latin, or gibberish. A pair of twins, dead keen on insulting each other and hitting each other to impress a woman. I'd done lots of stupid things to impress women, but this was ridiculous. I ended up being William Tell. I think they was college boys. Guess education ain't always the answer to mankind's problems. Nice enough boys, but odd as hell. And that's when they did the bottles on their head. Kieran, that poor kid, was spared from O'Driscoll's gang up in the mountains dead. Is dead. Killed by the bastards. He saved my life and I could not save his. They chopped his head off and tried to kill the lot of us. Mrs. Adler fought braver than any of us. She is driven by powerful forces I scarcely understand. That's what love has done to her, I guess. I feel like an animal living out in the mud here. The whole place gives me the creeps. And then we've got the cure and rest in peace. I cannot believe I'm writing this, but there's something mighty strange in that swamp. That's the that's the ghost. Oh yeah, 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 that's the ghost. God damn. Went to see the professor at his lab. He had built a sort of mechanical sun. He seemed to think it was amazing, but we could not get the thing to work properly. I was not half as impressed with him as he was with himself. Seems those of us who thought Angelo Bronte was a lizard in a suit was right. Them, as thought he was a gentleman, thief eager to help us on our merry way, was wrong. Bastard set us into a trap in town and told us to rob a trolley station. No money, but the entire police force was waiting for us. Dutch nearly died. Lenny fought real hard. The kid is good in a fight. And saved us. Dutch has planted some big escape for us all. Some grand master plan. Everything we are attempting here seems troubled. I hope we can get out of here alive. Right now it don't seem likely. Dutch is ranging about Bronte's deception or betrayal or whatever quite it was. Dutch don't like being made a fool of. Even Maiko with all his teasing and needling plays it real cool with Dutch. I would not want to be Bronte right now. I cannot see Dutch letting this pass. Went back to see Calloway and Levin. Calloway is a, still a drunken clown. Had me kidnap some old adversary, Slim Grant. They ended up shooting each other, and then the Calloway turned on me. Less said, the better. But Levin had himself a book, and I will slide back into obscurity. Gunsling ain't the life for me. I prefer good, honest killing with none of the pretensions. And there he is, dead. Found the little magician, reunited this odd family. Fella tried to give me the slip a few times, but in the end, they seemed to love each other more than they hate each other. Or at least, it was close. Want me to see their show sometime in San Denis and say they'll reward me then as they were broke now. And then this is when we were looking for that vampire. Again, doing Marilyn B's dirty work. I think that's how it's spelt. His first name is Henri, only he spells it Henry. Guess my French is nearly as bad as my English. Now I was threatened into threatening a newspaper man into donating the noble cause of truth and learning. I had to make this guy support a library. He didn't want to, then he did. Old blackmailing Lemieux had himself threatened by his own assailant. A chap I never liked too much, named John Mark, I think. So I go hunting for John Mark. Only John Mark is a noble believer in truth and honesty and cannot stand his boss's lies. I'm charged with killing him. I cannot do it. John Mark is irritating, but the mayor is worse. The mayor is all that is bad in those who would ever rule over us. And it ain't my business at all. So I let him live and let them deal with it themselves. I guess I'm through with politics. You never know who you're going to meet down a dark alley. That, I think, is the vampire. And then, it ain't John Mark. It's John Mark, you fool. <laughs> and he's now the mayor. I guess that's good. The Mew's done for. 
Saw them weird boys again with equally weird names. This time they asked me to give them a beating. Cannot even try to understand them. Goats. Elk. I found all the, um... The, uh, the, the dream catchers. Horse. Found that lizard on an island. Birds. Then, incoming orchids. Lady Slipper Orchid. Algernon is quite a character. Here's a sketch of him. More orchid, 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 orchid. Orchid, orchid. Found a gramophone on an on a old broken boat. But that was the only thing on the boat. I think I may have met a witch or a woman who wanted to be one. I don't know if I recorded that. She was a hermit on the west side. There was that hermit on the east side with the rare shotgun. She was on the west side. She had the second half of a torn treasure map. And I think that's where I got the three or six gold bars. Shady Bell. Show was interesting to say the least. And also dreadful. But I got paid. Yeah, when he lifted the guy in the fucking air. I uh, went to teach Angelo Bronte a lesson. Taught him something, I guess. Taught him alligators have a nasty way about them. Dutch is torn between his dreams of escape and his need to prove something or other. I don't quite know what, but not sure he does. Wants us to make one last big haul of cash. Dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. Then flee for Tahiti. Retire and become farmers. What the hell is Tahiti? I guess they don't have Pinkertons there at least. All of them. Uh, years we dreamed of being ranchers out in the virgin lands in the west. Ah, oh, fuck! Now it's bananas and coconuts and long boat rides. Guess anywhere the train can get to, the lock can get to. Dutch probably has it right. This country really don't want folk like us anymore. From ocean to ocean, place is going to law-abiding and decent and doled and rigid till folks have frozen themselves into nothingness. The people in the city are worse and more desperate than the nastiest gunslinger I ever met. They'd shoot you in the back and make you pay for your own funeral. They throw shit on you for sport. They walk past the lost and starving like they can't see them. Keep feeling sick, but I'm sure it's nothing. This damn swamp, it ain't natural. What does that say? Adio Bronte. I don't know what that, that was. Then I found those birds on that other island. And then there were Pinkerton showed up. Hosea and Lenny. My lord, what a goddamn mess. Everything. The bank job we planned so hard was a goddamn setup. Hosea got himself killed. Lenny got shot in the head. Marston got himself arrested and is awaiting trial. We fled, leapt on a ship, sailed into a storm. The ship sank. Whole thing like a dream, like a fool's nightmare. I survived that, being lost at sea. And got washed ashore on an island called Guarma. Whatever Tahiti is like, I hope it ain't nothing like Guarma. Some nasty bastard named Fusar had the people by the throat, and we ended up in a fight with a goddamn army. Javier nearly died. I nearly got killed. Met some real decent folk. Brave folk living in a land of hell. We got a boat out of there, just about, after some real nasty fighting. Don't think I met many folk deserve killing more than that piece of shit Fusar. Upon returning, found the folk again. At least, them as ain't dead. But within a few hours, the Pinkertons had found all of us. Old ancient Milton wants us all dead, and yet somehow we survived and are now planning another escape. Not sure what happens next. Whole thing has been hard on all of us. Most of all, on Dutch, who seems half crazed by all we've gone through. Rest in peace, Hosea. Beaver Hollow. Molly ratted us out. Dutch broke her heart, so she told the law about us. 
explains how they found us so easily, I guess. Love does strange things to us all. Even stranger than hate. She turned up, drank and mouthy, and told us all of this. She was so pathetic I wanted to spare her, but Miss Grimshaw put a bullet in her anyway. I guess it was right. I guess there wasn't much of a choice. This was in our new camp. High in some nasty country, badlands are as bad as we can find this far east. The place we are holed up used to belong to a bunch of murderers. The Murphrys, or some nonsense like that, they call themselves. We shot some of them, but there's more lurking in the woods around this place. Don't think we have long here before the law or Pinkertons find us again. I just hope we can keep ahead of them for a while. Or ahead of ourselves. Turns out, I'm not very well. Got tuberculosis. Doctor did not know how long I would last. All of them bullets shot at me, all of them horses threw at me. All of them fights, and it was beating up that pathetic little fella Downs that killed me, I reckon. He's the only man I've been near was real sick. He begged me for mercy, and I beat the bastard, and he died. And now I'm dying. The way the world... My mind is racing, of course. That monk and that nun, Downs' widow, Abigail, Mary. Dutch when I first knew him. Hosea, my dead pa. The no good bastard, the whole crowd of people. What kind of man have I been? What kind of man am I? What world is this we live in? A land of fury or a place of love? Am I being prepared for eternal damnation and my past any kind of saving? Is that all fairy tales? Man ain't got much good in him. I ain't got no good in me. I don't think and yet I see goodness. I see it, if not in me, in good folk. In Abigail and her love for Jack. And that silly monk. And Downs, I guess. Begging not for himself, but for the poor. Even though he was near starving himself. Maybe I don't want salvation. Part of me has always longed for death. Well, here it comes, I suppose. Found a raving lunatic. Completely raving. Took him back to a village nearby, Butcher's Creek. Something ain't right there. Some kind of village elder, Obadiah? Maybe. Appeared. He spoke. Mostly nonsense. Weird place. Something not right at all. Sisica Penitentiary from the air. When we were in the hot air balloon. Sadie Adler and I rescued Marston from prison, where he was awaiting hanging. Spied on them in a balloon, an event which was amazing and awful, and I thought would kill me quicker than this illness. Later, Sadie and I rescued him while getting shot at. I did it for Abigail, of course, in her own way, the finest woman I know, but also for Jack and I guess Marston himself. I kind of like him. We argued over the years, but I've grown to care for a little, a little for him. He's less of a fool than he was, and maybe he can have the luck that has eluded me. Jack is an innocent little boy, and in him I see what I missed. We did it. Mrs. Adler and me, and then got attacked by Dutch. I went behind his back, sure, and he never likes that. But I suppose the years of blind loyalty is at an end. Loyal, yes, but not blind. Not until he opens his eyes as to the hell we are in. And who his friends really are. Micah, I no longer trust, however. Nor do I trust half of them, nor myself. Whole thing is a mess, and I cannot think clearly. Dutch, in his infinite wisdom, decided to shoot Leviticus Cornwall. Now, I'm not saying Cornwall did not need shooting, but I don't think it was quite our place to act as his judge and executioner. Micah and Dutch seemed to be planning something. Seems like what they both want, most of all, is all of us dead. I don't know what that seal is about, though. Hmm. I think I met a giant. Either that or I was dreaming. Yeah, we never got to say goodbye to him. Saw Eagle Flies, the chief's son again. Dutch was captivated by him. Turning on all his charm and confidence and seeming like a dangerous snake. 
What is wrong with him? Eagle Flies is desperate and angry. The local regiment are tormenting him and goading him into a fight. Now Dutch is in his ear. This will be a disaster. Poor old Karen has taken to the drink something awful. Took medicine to that creepy pair as they'd poisoned themselves something proper. They survived, but I doubt they'll make it for much longer, like a pair of circus clowns. Uh, that was that was black and white he's referring to. I don't know if there's supposed to be a sketch there, but there's not. Went back to that place, Butcher's Creek. The locals thought they were being attacked by demons, but I think they were just sick dogs. Seems like Obadiah, the elder, is also possessed by the snake oil shaman fella that turned up. He wants me to destroy some cursed charms in the woods around there. We shall see quite what the shaman's game is, but there's some nonsense afoot. I destroyed the charms and went back to the village, and now the shaman announces things are worse because I destroyed the charms. Remarkably convenient. I was about to give him a beating when he ran off. The elder said the shaman was interested in a mine shaft. Perhaps that's worth a look. Went to the mine, looking to figure out what weird shaman has over that village. I don't know why exactly, it just seemed important, I guess. The whole place was filthy, and something nasty was leaking into the water in the soil. I'm no expert, but that stuff might well explain why all the folks in Butcher Creek are so odd. Anyway, I made my way back to the village, armed with this knowledge and a little of the evil-looking water. Lo and behold, I find the shaman trying to force that duped elder into signing away his and the village's property rights for the rights for, to get a mining company to leave. It was not quite clear which. The sham shaman starts attacking me, so I force him to drink some of the runoff. He admits all, promptly loses his mind, and I'm awaiting around to be treated like the hero I am, or not. The villagers blame the curse. At this point, I left them to their dreams of specters. Wapiti. Went to speak to the chief about the situation. I helped him recover some precious things from the army. He gave me some medicine, which helped me a little. He's a man who, not so long ago, I would have found weak and pathetic. And now I see as wise and thoughtful and sensible. I would love to help him, or at least stop Dutch pushing his son to do something real stupid. Met a one-legged man, war veteran, interesting fella. Said to come by his cabin on the other side of O'Cray's Run. Maybe I will. Captain Monroe. Saw Captain Monroe again. A good man in a difficult situation. This dump, we must see him a long way from West Point in Washington. He cares about the Indians, but he ain't too friendly with the local regiment. Helped him distribute some vaccines others were not so keen to offer up. Got a letter from Mary. What did I expect? What did I want? Weren't never meant to be and never really was, and yet somehow in the end, I discovered I had a heart because it was broken. Oh, you fool. You sad, deluded fool. Torn in two by different ideas of who you were, and it turns out you weren't neither one of them. That was... <sighs> That's some sad shit, man. Went to see the fella, Hamish Sinclair. He's quite a sportsman and outdoorsman. I'm fishing for pike. Got him in the end. Wants to take me hunting. Hamish, not the pike. See, he's got some half-finished sketches in here. I wonder why. And then some of them just don't have sketches at all. Things went from bad to worse with the army. It was not wrong. The local regiment's colonel despised Captain Monroe and planned to destroy him. Charles and I rescued Monroe and probably ruined his life in the process. I hope he can find peace someplace. After putting him on the train, I bumped into that nun sister, Calderon, bound for Mexico. She gave me a few home truths about existing in this world, and perhaps the next. Maybe I've gotten something to hope for, anyway. It all sounded very pretty, and took away all the dread I've been feeling. For some insane reason, I went out gathering debts for Strauss. 
whole business revolted me. Bunch of sad, desperate bastards and their worst nightmare. I'd have enough of this whole business, so I ran Strauss out of camp. Whole business of loaning revolted me. Turns out it's going to kill me, too, so I guess that's about right. Probably did Strauss a favor running him out of camp, but either way, I could not bear to see his beady little eyes anymore. Me? Fucking neither, dude. Side of that poor soldier of his squad wife will be with me when I die. Saw the Downs kid beat, being beat up. Being beaten up. So, I helped him. Maybe I shouldn't have killed his poor father if I cared so goddamn much. What a conflicted fool I've become, or have always been. Then I tried to rescue his mother, who was in the process of getting herself murdered. Maybe she wanted that. I don't know. She looked at me like I am what I am. A killer seeking out salvation. Only I'm not. I don't want saving. I don't deserve it. I just want to help a few folk. Sure as shit, I owe her. Felt like a fraud and a fool, but at least I did something. Hamish and I got to chatting. Then we went hunting. And this wolf he'd been after. Only we suddenly realized the bastards were hunting us, not the reverse. Eventually, I got the pack leader, and they let us be. A real lucky escape. Pelt nice, though. I'm starting to wonder if... Yeah, it says pelt nice, though. As you can, you can see, like, his, his sense of grammar is dropping. And I wonder if his mind is going. I don't know if it affects your head at all. I should read up on tuberculosis. I mean... I don't know how many people it affects each year. I don't know what the likelihood is of contracting it from another person. But, uh, yeah, he's 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 messed up on grammar a few times now. Pelt nice, though. Pelt is nice, though. The pelt is nice, though, would be the best way to put it. There's those statues and then the code thing or whatever. So I'm Mr. White and Mr. Black living happy as a pair of argumentative, murderous bastards ever could. That was holed up in a tree squabbling like angry bastards. Hamish died. We was hunting boar, and the boar won, at least against him. I liked him, but more than that, I admired him. He lacked self-pity, and he lacked confusion about his place in the world. He was the man we would all want to be, if we weren't so distracted being idiots. He gave me Buell, his moody, magnificent horse to look after. Uh, TNT and Bacchus Bridge. Blew up a bridge with Marston, either to stop the army killing us quite so easily when we attempt to rob his last train, or because we want to encourage Uncle Sam to send another train full of payroll for us to rob. All things seems even more ludicrous and moth-eaten when I write it down. Dutch is now acting crazy, and I'm acting crazy back. I'm facing death and acting foolish. I hope Marston uses his brain. The time for heroics and loyalty to people is over. The time is for acting right and saving the innocent, not the guilty. Fort Wallace. Went with Charles to save eagle flies. He was going to hang him, I think. We rescued him out from Fort Wallace in a storm. I don't feel so good. I see clearly and I see nothing at all. The whole place has gone to hell. Dutch talking nonsense and folk undecided as if to see they see him as the only hope or an anchor dragging us all to the bottom of the ocean. I hope John has more brains in his head than sometimes I fear he does. I should have, well, it's a bit late for regrets. There's a whole lot I should have done, even more I should not have done. But I suppose every man his regrets is to let him die happy. I just hope I did some good once I learned to see the world for what it was. Ain't my fault the process took quite as long as it did. It's actually my fault, not Arthur's. Oh, Mary, be happy, please be happy. Tilly, Mary Beth, save Karen if she ain't too far gone. 
Fuck, that's so sad. That's so fucking sad, man. God. Ah. I fucking love this game. I fucking love this game. John, protect Abigail and Jack. Rains fall. Save your son as you could not save your people. Dutch, start listening to them as really loved you. Saw the two strange boys and the girl they claimed to love once again. This time it was real strange. I mean, it was strange before, but this time it was, well, real strange. They got me to push off, push them off a waterfall in a barrel. They both somehow survived just about, but then they turned on the girl and went off together like two happy peas in a pod. Not sure what to think about the whole business. So we saw Colm O'Driscoll swing. Indeed, we did the jo law's job for them. Oh, wait a minute, what was this? Hanging Dog Ranch. Yeah, that was where we just had. Dutch back to being himself, at least for a moment. Sadie, like a dog with a bone, although she ain't done with them yet, I don't imagine. Wonder if this will calm Dutch down and we can get back to surviving ourselves, rather than just killing them we despise. I didn't feel too much. Bastard wanted to kill me, but he didn't want to that much, and... I guess I felt about the same. You weren't ever exactly my fight, really. And now my fight is a real different, with a different enemy, one I cannot see, nor put a bullet into. Him and his boys was our fault, alright, but did we ever exist, or were we just a group of individuals, each just falling for Dutch's dumb bluster? I feel like I don't know anything anymore. That whole life of certainties is over. My whole code that I lived and killed by. Was it true? Was there bigger truth? I was too dumb to ever see. And that's it. That's where we're at. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Red Dead Redemption 2. And I'll see you in the next one.